This is episode 348 of the Beyond the Food Show, and today it's going to be a listener Q&A, volume two, and we're going to talk about eating past fullness and confidence at work. Stay tuned. Welcome to the Going to Beyond the Food Show, the only podcast that teaches you how to reshape your mind, not your body, to make your life better, bigger, and bolder, your undieted life. I'm your host, Stephanie Dodier, reform dieter, nutritionist, and coach. You ready? Let's do this. Hello, my sisters. Welcome back. This is volume two of listeners Q&A. If you've not yet listened to volume one, which was last week, or the prior episode, 347, go and do that. I contextualize this series of podcasts, listener Q&A in the first episode. Today, we're going to jump right into answering some of your questions. As usual, I want to get keep your confidentiality. I'm not going to use personal information. I'm going to formulate your question in a way that it's completely confidential. A reminder to everyone, in the last episode, I taught you about active listening. And I want to remind everyone on this intentional thought. I always hear what I need. How can I apply today's episode to my life, my situation? You ready? Let's go with the first question. I'm trying to view food as neutral and that my eating is there to nourish my body. But I continue to eat past fullness and I'm having a hard time listening to my inner voice about what my body needs because it doesn't do what I think it should do. Help me with fullness. This is such a frequent question and such frequency that I coached on that yesterday. This question was sent to me almost six months ago. And yesterday, February, I coached on that in our professional training program. And I came up with this great analogy that I would like to offer to all of you today when we're talking about eating cues and eating to fullness. For those that are new around here, we use the intuitive eating process. I'm a certified intuitive eating counselor, and that's the methodology we use within On Diet Your Life to help you come back to a natural state of relationship with food and eating. That's why this listener is talking about eating past fullness. We have three eating cues, hunger, fullness, and satisfaction. And... I've been doing this work for almost eight years now, and of the three eating cues, the one that has the most drama around it is always fullness. And there's a very good reason why that is. It's because we have learned over the years of dieting and being entrenched in diet culture and fat phobia that being full eating past fullness was the reason why we were gaining weight or we were fat. And then diet culture then said to us, if you could only have enough willpower, you wouldn't eat that much. You wouldn't eat past your fullness. And when you respect your fullness, you don't gain weight and everybody is thin, right? This diet culture function on the assumption that all the bodies are meant to be thin and they're all meant to look the same, right? That's the whole system of oppression. And you think about diet culture with the thin body, you think about white supremacy with everybody should be white, right? That's what system of oppression do they set a standard and then us the little people who obey the system of oppression have to work to meet that standard so in the case of that culture 
our entire obsession and time and resources is spent achieving thinness. And one of the way to do that is not eating too much. Now, now that's contextualized why we have so much drama about eating to fullness. Now, fast forward, you're like, oh my God, now I understand diet culture. I don't want to be part of that system anymore. I believe all bodies are good bodies. So let me learn intuitive eating so I can get back to a natural way of eating, which by the way, that's what intuitive eating is. It's the innate relationship with food that all humans were born with, but that we lost because we restricted food to achieve the thin ideal. So, and then we come, you come to us, the professional, right, who are trained in that process, and we say, you've got to eat against your eating cues, hunger, fullness, and satisfaction. And then you go out there, and then you eat, and you don't feel full. So you eat some more, and you still don't feel full. And then you eat some more, and then finally you feel full. And then you walk away from the table and then your mind start going crazy. Oh my God, you're gonna gain weight. Oh my God, you're a bad person. You've eat at fullness. Your stomach is stretching. It's so uncomfortable. You're a terrible person for sure. You're gonna get so much weight, right? And I'm not going to get into all the thoughts, but I could give you probably the most common 50 thoughts around fullness, but you know what I'm saying, right? You've been through it or you're in it right now. Your mind is doing that simply to protect you. Your mind is having an opinion to the sensation of fullness in your body because for years, and for most of us, for decades, that sensation, when it was reached, was meant to tell you you were a bad person. You were going to gain weight, and you're terrible, and you don't have self-power, and you don't have discipline. It, only if you could, you would be thin. So your brain has been trained to experience the sensation of fullness in your body and have an opinion about it to send you back to dieting and restricting. Nothing has gone wrong. Your brain is doing exactly what it should be doing. Now, you need to coach your brain in thinking new thoughts about the sensation of fullness. And if you don't do that, if you don't do mindset work, to change how your brain experienced the sensation of fullness in your body, then you will probably quote unquote quit intuitive eating and then go around and say, well, intuitive eating doesn't work. No, intuitive eating works. You just haven't done all the work yet, which is thought work, mindset work. That's why we teach you the mindset work, how to change your thought. The first week you start working with us inside of Undiet Your Life, because we know you're going to need it. So to you, my friend, who's asking that question about struggling listening to your eating cues, you're actually not struggling listening to your eating cues. Sound like you are actually connected to your eating cues. You're listening to it, but you haven't changed your thoughts about them. You're still thinking about your fullness cue in the same way as you did when you were in diet culture. And you have to be intentionally changing this opinion and these thoughts. It won't happen on its own. You actually have to quote unquote work at changing your thoughts about fullness. And this is where my analogy is gonna come in for you. From a pure anatomy standpoint, go back to your grade school, maybe high school biology class. We all studied to some degree the anatomy of the body and your stomach is nothing but a pouch just like your bladder. Your bladder is a pouch for the liquids 
in your body. And your stomach is a pouch that receives food and other matters, but in our case, food to be digested and then sent into the remainder of the digestive system to then nourish the rest of your body. But the bladder and the stomach are both just pouches and they both have sensation of fullness or emptiness. Now, I'm saying that to you because I want you to think about this. When you have a full bladder, do you have mind drama about that? Do you judge yourself for having a full bladder? Do you go around saying, oh my God, you're such a bad person. You drank too much liquid. You're terrible. You're going to pee in your pants. You're such a terrible person. You're lazy. If you had self-control, you wouldn't have drank that much liquid. None of us do that. None of us. What the sensation of fullness in your bladder are interpreted by your brain as, oh my God, I got to go to the bathroom, girl. <laughs> like it's time to go to the bathroom. That's exactly the same thing with the fullness sensation in your stomach. It's just a message. It's just a cue to inform you of how your body is feeling and giving you a cue to make the next level of decision. So when you feel the bladder full, you're like, got to find a bathroom. And depending on how full it feels, the urgency of resolving the problem of the bathroom increase or is normalized. The same thing with the fullness of your stomach. Oh, I'm full. Oh, okay. Do I want to continue to eat what's on the plate or am I done? That's it. That's all it means. Any other thoughts beyond that are diet culture thoughts. And that's where thought work, self-coaching, cognitive behavioral coaching comes in to allow you to go in your brain, take an inventory of your thoughts, decide which thought you want to keep, and then choose a new thought, help your brain believe that new thought, and then be done. That's my recommendation to you. What your question is telling me is that you haven't spent time inventorying your thoughts about fullness and you haven't clean quote unquote cleaned them up or Mary Kondo them as I like to say sometimes and you need to do that and that's all that's simple as that so that's the question on fullness everybody keep this analogy of bladder and stomach it was such a good coaching that I did and I'm going to use it moving forward all the time Here's the second question I'm going to answer today. I've been listening to you. In fact, I was a student inside of your Enough Masterclass. Thank you for coming. And it became really clear to me that the way I think about myself and my body is what creates my confidence and how I carry myself in the world. But now I keep wondering if there's a link between my current lack of confidence in my body and my confidence in my career and my work. Could it be why I'm scared to put myself up for promotion at work and sell my own merit to get that damn position? Thank you. Here's my answer. Hell yes. Yes, that is the reason why. <laughs> that is why, sisters, that I'm so bloody passionate about undieting our life and at the highest level, claiming back our power over our body so we can go out into the world and conquer other areas of our life, make changes politically, to change the future of the next generation of women. We cannot go and claim space, claim money, claim in this case, the promotion at work when we don't feel confident in our body. So yes, my sister, your intuition was 100% right. It's a direct correlation 
between your confidence at work, we'll call it that, and your confidence in your body. Here's a way of, for you to think about that. We cannot hate a part of ourselves, our body, and then be confident externally into the world. And when we try to be confident despite, quote unquote, thinking our physical body, we then fall into the world of compensation. We're like, I'm going to try to show up into the world confidently, even though I don't deserve it because I'm not thin enough, because I'm not young enough, because I have gray hair and because I have wrinkle. Then we're like, but I'm going to make it up. I'm going to show the world that I'm worthy, that I'm worth this position, this promotion, or making more money in my business. So we fall into pattern of compensation. For me, while I was in the corporate world, I carried with me the shackle of you're too fat, you're too tall, <laughs> you're too voicey, you're a woman in a room full of men. I had all the thoughts, so I overworked. And I spent all my energy focused on pleasing my boss so that to make him... <laughs> It was a, a man to make him not reconsider his decision of giving me the position he gave me because it was the first time ever a woman had that position. So I was constantly focused on pleasing whoever was above me and made the decision to give me a promotion to the point of complete exhaustion. I'm not going to get into that story today. I've told that story many times on many episodes, but I compensated by overworking and by people pleasing. Some people compensate with perfectionism. At the end of the day, what we do is we try hard to offset our belief about our self-deficiency. And then we frame our entire life around that. And I see, I saw that to myself in the corporate world. And I see this today when I train professional, I have a program for health professional where I train them in our methodology, but also how to build a business following the same ethics as the non-diet approach. And nearly all the practitioner and the coaches I work with, we have to do work on body image because they're as the tenth, in the case of business owner, to show up on videos, to do Zoom calls, to do to take pictures for social media, right? They're really hesitant because they don't feel confident in their body. So yeah, so here's what's going to happen. It sounds like you're working with us to some degree. For people that are listening to this, two to three times a year, I do kind of intensive classes and the enough masterclass was one of those it was a two-day masterclass it was a paid masterclass where i taught women how to feel enough so what i taught you in that class about feeling enough i want you to use that tool about your body image so for anybody listening to this who didn't come to the NF Masterclass or not in my program, I'm going to simplify it for you. You need to change your thoughts. You need to change your opinion that you have about your body. Earlier in the first question, I, I showed you and I explained to you how your opinion about fullness created the experience that you had with the sensation of fullness in your body. And I made the analogy of the bladder and the stomach, right? It's the same thing with your body. Right now, your brain has been programmed, has been conditioned to have an opinion about your body that goes alongside with fat phobia and diet culture and the thin ideal. Your work is to change these thoughts. That's how we work on body image. Body image, if anybody wants to do this work, is 100% in your mind, in your nervous system. You could habituate your nervous system to feel safe in your body, but it's a, it's, call it a mindset and a nervous system regulation work. So here's what you could do. Take a piece of paper, the same thing we did in Enough on the very first half an hour, 
we wrote all the thoughts we had about ourselves, wrote all the thoughts that you have about your body, and then look at them, spend the time reflecting on where you learned to think these thoughts. Was it from diet culture? Was it in your family, your mom? I did the first Q&A was about setting boundaries with our mom. Many of the women I coach, their thoughts about their body comes from their mom. Where did you learn to think these thoughts? Is it true? Is it a fact? Or is it just a thought? And which one do you want to move forward with? Which one do you want to continue to think? And which one do you want to stop to think? And if you're like, I don't want to think any of them, then what do you want to think about your body? And I'm going to give you the most simple thought that I start nearly all my client with. My body is a vehicle to experience life. My body is a vehicle to experience life. Start there. Start conditioning your mind to have this opinion about why you have a body. And as you do this work, what will happen is you will grow your confidence in your body by doing this thought work. And then it will start having a ripple effect into your presence at work. You're not gonna directly have to work with your confidence at work. Doing the work through your body image will kind of automatically also build up your confidence at work. Let me know how that turns out for you. This is it. I hope both of those questions were very helpful for all of you listening to this podcast. I love you, my sister, and I'll see you on the next episode. If you are loving what you're learning on the podcast, you have to come and check out Undiet Your Life. This is where we get to hang out together, where you get the individual help applying the concept thought on the podcast while learning new coaching tool that will make your life even more amazing. It's also where you get to apply the learning to think better, eat better, and feel better and create your undieted life, your better, bigger, and bolder life. Go to stephaniedoze.com forward slash join. I'd love to have you join us inside of Undiet Your Life, and I'll see you on the other side.